Today is September the 2nd, and this day, like every day, we are on a journey. In this podcast, we will include readings of scripture, meditation, silence, and prayer. Our readings come from the Revised Common Lectionary. Our reading today begins in Psalm 1, then to Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 12 through 26, And then we'll finish in Colossians chapter 4, verses 7 through 17. This is the word of the Lord. Psalm 1. Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or stand around with sinners, or join in with mockers. But they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season, Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do. But not the wicked. They are like worthless chaff scattered by the wind. They will be condemned at the time of judgment. Sinners will have no place among the godly. For the Lord watches over the path of the godly. But the path of the wicked leads to destruction. Deuteronomy 7 If you listen to these regulations and faithfully obey them, the Lord your God will keep his covenant of unfailing love with you, as he promised with an oath to our ancestors. He will love you and bless you, and he will give you many children. He will give fertility to your land and your animals. When you arrive in the land he swore to give your ancestors, you will have large harvest of grain, new wine and olive oil, and great herds of cattle, sheep and goats. You will be blessed above all the nations of the earth. None of your men or women will be childless, and all your livestock will bear young. And the Lord will protect you from all sickness. He will not let you suffer from the terrible diseases you knew in Egypt, but he will inflict them on all your enemies. You must destroy all the nations the Lord your God hands over to you. Show them no mercy and do not worship their gods, or they will trap you. Perhaps you will think to yourselves, How can we ever conquer these nations that are so much more powerful than we are? But don't be afraid of them. Just remember what the Lord your God did to Pharaoh and to all the land of Egypt. Remember the great tares the Lord your God sent against them. You saw it with your own eyes. And remember the miraculous signs and wonders and the strong hand and powerful arm with which he brought you out of Egypt. The Lord your God will use this same power against all the people you fear. And then the Lord your God will send tear to drive out the few survivors still hiding from you. No, do not be afraid of those nations, for the Lord your God is among you, and he is a great and awesome God. The Lord your God will drive those nations out ahead of you little by little. You will not clear them all away at once. Otherwise, the wild animals would multiply too quickly for you. But the Lord your God will hand them over to you, He will throw them into complete confusion until they are destroyed. He will put their kings in your power, and you will erase their names from the face of the earth. For no one will be able to stand against you, and you will destroy them all. You must burn their idols in fire, and you must not covet the silver or gold that covers them. You must not take it, or it will become a trap to you. For it is detestable to the Lord your God. Do not bring any detestable objects into your home, for then you will be destroyed just like them. You must utterly detest such things, for they are set apart for destruction. Colossians 4, 7-17 through Tychius will give you a full report about how I am getting along. He is a beloved brother and faithful helper who serves me in the Lord's work. I have sent him to you for this very purpose, to let you know how we are doing and to encourage you. I am also sending Onesimus, a faithful and beloved brother, one of your own people. He and Tychius will tell you everything that is happening here. Aristarchus, who is in prison with me, sends you his greetings, and so does Mark, Barnabas' cousin. As you were instructed before, make Mark welcome if he comes your way. Jesus, the one we call Justice, also sends his greetings. These are the only Jewish believers among my co-workers. 
They are working with me for the kingdom of God, and what a comfort they have been. Epaphras, a member of your own fellowship and a servant of Christ Jesus, sends you his greetings. He always prays earnestly for you, asking God to make you strong and perfect, fully confident that you are following the whole will of God. I can assure you that he prays hard for you, and also for the believers in Laodicea and Heropolis. Luke, the beloved doctor, sends his greetings, and so does Demas. Please give my greetings to our brothers and sisters at Laodicea and to Nympha and the church that meets in her house. After you have read this letter, pass it on to the church at Laodicea, so they can read it too. And you should read the letter I wrote to them. And say to Archippus, Be sure to carry out the ministry the Lord gave you. And now may our Lord give his blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. Amen. And now let us take some time for silent prayer and reflection. Lord God, Almighty and Everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin or be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far and those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Lord, grant that I may not seek so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand to be loved as to love. For it is in the giving that we receive, it is in the pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in the dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your grateful children, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and all whom you have made. We bless you for your creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world through our Lord Jesus Christ. For the means of grace and the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies, that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but with our lives by giving up ourselves for your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, 
to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And now as our Lord has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let me invite you to join us for tomorrow's podcast. We meet each day to journey together into the loving heart of God. You can also join our other podcast, The Daily Radio Bible, where we journey through the entire Bible over the course of a year. But more than that, what we desire most is to experience and have an encounter with the God who is love. Find out more at dailyradiobible.com. The music for this podcast was provided by the artist and composer David Neveu. Find out more about his music at davidneveu.com. And now let's go forward in God's joy. Let's let his joy be our strength. And let us always remember this, that you are loved. All righty, I'll talk to you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.